Okay, Venus? Okay, Steve. Right. Let's go. Send out a general alert. This is an emergency. Yes, sir. World Space Patrol Headquarters, Space City, calling all Earth tracking stations. Emergency. Priority one, stand by. Repeat. Stand by. Canaveral, Roger. Woomera rocket range, standing by. Okinawa, standing by. Yadro Banks. What do you make by. of it, sir? As I feared, Lieutenant 90, a missile. And according to the computer, it's carrying a planatomic bomb. Which is powerful enough to destroy the whole Earth. Lieutenant 90, check the exact position of the missile, then instruct one of our spaceships to intercept. Let's see. Sector 25. That's Fireball XL5 Steve Zodiac. Robert, we're on our way home at last. On our way on, on our way on, on our way on. Gee, I keep forgetting, you're only a robot. Say, Venus. How's our beautiful doctor of space medicine? I gather by the compliments, Steve, you want something to eat. I'm preparing a meal right now. I just adore your French cooking. What's on the menu today? Blue pills, pink pills, or those delicious capsules that you make up? Boy, will I be glad to get back to Earth to have a steak. Calling Navigation Bay. Say, Professor Matic, how are we doing? Are we on schedule? Uh, well, Steve, we are approaching position uh, 15 0 blue. And I'm registering minus 14 G from the moon. 14 G from the moon? That can only mean one thing. Well, what's that, Professor? <laughs> it's time to eat. <laughs> Say, you gave me a scare. I thought it was something important. Space City to Fireball. Planatomic missile approaching Earth. Position 24-0 red. Intercept. Repeat. Intercept. Go, XL-5. Abandon routine procedure. Intercepting enemy missile. Arming all warheads. Awaiting course instructions. Where is the missile heading? According to Space City, it's heading towards Earth. We've got to stop it, Venus. It's carrying a planatomic warhead. A planatomic warhead? Why, Steve, that's a million times more powerful than a hydrogen bomb. That's right. Our only chance is to explode it in space as far away from Earth as possible. Is the professor tracking the missile? Yep. He's getting me a position right now. Okay, Steve. I'll go straight away to help him. Okay, Venus. Good shooting. Steve. Steer 184 a zero blue. Roger. All warheads go. Fire starboard thrusters. Roger. Okay, Professor. We're on course. Maximum speed. All right, Steve. I'm switching to radar telescope. Uh, radar telescope, Venus. Radar telescope operating. I've got it. Range. 24, 25. Steve, 
We will have to fire the interceptors at maximum range. That way we'll be clear of the radiation when it explodes. Roger, Professor. Prepare forward interceptors. Roger. Fireball XL5 is dead on target. How are we doing, Professor? In range now, Steve. Stand by with interceptor. Standing by. Range 2400. G rate 2. 2400. G rate 2. Master guidance system UHF. Master guidance system UHF. 10 seconds. 10 seconds, Steve. Roger. Standing by to correct course. Six seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, and go. What's happened, Professor? The interceptor exploded before it reached the target. It was exploded by radio waves. There must be a crew on board. Yeah, a suicide crew. Interceptor 2. Roger, Interceptor 2. Switch on jamming B. Will do, Professor. Ten seconds. He's done it! Nice work, Steve. You okay? Fine, Commander. What now? Steve, our computers have traced the source of the missile to planet 4-6. Sector 25. Looks like it's your baby. Good luck, Steve. Roger. Setting course for planet 4-6 to investigate. Say, how about some coffee, Venus? I guess we've earned it. I've got Robert as a co-pilot. How long, Steve, before we arrive at planet 4-6? Oh, quite a few days yet, Venus. I, uh, I suggest we rest all we can. We don't know what's in store for us when we arrive. Say, how about that coffee? Oh, gee, I'm sorry. I'm a tootie. I almost forgot. XL5, this is Space City. According to our calculations, you are now approaching planet 46. Space City, Roger. Just going into orbit. We'll call you when we've carried out reconnaissance. Here we go. Fire main retros. Okay, Steve. Firing retros. All right, Steve. We're in orbit. Robert is in the rear control center. You are clear to go. Okay, Professor. Venus and I will take a quick look around. If we need any help, we'll call you. I'll be standing by, Steve. Eh, uh, uh, take care of Venus. <laughs> we don't want to lose our doctor of space medicine. Sure thing, Professor. Safety belt fastened. Safety belt fastened. Here we go. <laughs> Do you really think that the missile was launched from this planet? Well, Venus, that's what the computers say. We have no evidence that there's any life on planet 4-6, although it does have an atmosphere. What worries me, Steve, is that the computers in Space City are very rarely wrong. Sure. That's why we're here.
Let's unfasten our safety belts and go out and investigate on our jetmobiles. Ah, good. They've landed safely. See what I mean, Venus? No sign of life. No plants, no water, nothing. Yes, but this could be just a barren part of the planet. No, it's all like this. Professor Maddock has carried out extensive surveys of the planet from space. Gee, this place gives me the creeps. Nothing but rocks and craters. And boy, is it cold. Steve, look, caves. That could be the answer. I'm a tootie. Why didn't I think of that before? Come on, let's go. Look, Steve. Diamonds. Thousands of diamonds. Looks like we've stumbled on something, Venus. Come on. Venus, stop. Venus, on the other side, look, a door. This can only mean one thing, life. I'm going across, Venus, you stay here. If anything happens, get back to the ship right away and get help, fast. But Steve, Steve. What's wrong? The forward thrust motors have failed. Must be the heat. My speed has dropped, but I can still make it as long as the hover jets don't stop. Turn back, Steve. It's too late. I've got to keep going now. You're almost there. Venus, I made it. Oh, Steve. to have recovered from the effects of the coma ray. What's happened to Venus? Your Earth woman is quite safe for the moment. Where is she? She is out there in the rocket that will be launched against Earth in exactly eight minutes from now. You're bluffing. Am I?
Okay. What do you want me to do? Very simple. Instruct your spaceship to land. And if I don't? You will. Fireball XL-5. This is Steve Zodiac. Have discovered launching bay and have occupants held as prisoners. Bring her down, Professor. I can't carry them all in Fireball Junior. <laughs> That's boss, Steve. We're on our way. It, Robert, landing procedure. Position code 2200. Landing procedure underway. Excellent, Steve Zodiac. Now instruct him to land at position code 220 blue and your Earth woman will be released. Fireball XL5, this is Steve Zodiac. That's right, Professor. Land at position code 220 blue. But, 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 Steve, I... No questions, Professor. Just do as I say, please. Okay, Steve. Uh, Robert, uh, change landing procedure. Blue position, code 220 green. Changing landing position to code 220 green. Uh, uh, correction, uh, blue. Repeat, blue. Understand, blue. Yeah, no, 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 Robert, it's no need to get all steamed up. We all make mistakes. I, I know you think I'm a bit of a tool, but I'm only human. Zodiac. Observe. They're sinking into the ground. They are indeed. All is going according to plan. Your spaceship will sink in the ash. The beautiful Earth woman will die. When the rocket hits its target, Earth, then it is your turn. You have already cost us one failure. So much for your word as a subterrane. Silence, Earthman. Proceed with launching. Resuming countdown at minus 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32. Robert! Restart the motors. Robert! What's the matter? Are you there? Twelve. Eleven. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. Zero, ignite. Volt on guidance mechanism. Change guidance frequency. Tapa Hadouya. Tapa Hadouya. Tapa Hadouya. Niko Batama Azoha. Niko Batama Rocket now under control guidance system. Functioning normally. Don't worry, Steve Zodiac. Unlike Earthmen, we do not make mistakes. That's what you think. Good, Robert. We we can't get her out of this without Fireball Junior. What's happened to Steve?
Fireball XL5 from Steve Zodiac. I'll be with you in a moment, Professor. Once we get the nose cone attached, we'll be able to pull Fireball out of the ash. Hurry, Steve! We're almost completely submerged. Okay, Professor, I'm back. Firing main boosters. Instruct your subterrene to abandon the missile with Venus. Now, if you don't, we'll be forced to destroy your planet. Now, transmit. This is your subterranean chief speaking. Abandon missile with Earth Woman. Repeat. Abandon missile with Earth Woman. I have passed on your message, but to no avail. The Earth Woman will die anyway. They have no space equipment on board. Here, take this. It's an oxygen pill. It will enable you to live in space. Okay, Professor, I've taken my oxygen pills. I'm going to bring Venus and the subterrain on board. Uh, take it easy, Steve. Okay, Steve. It, they reject it. Roger, Professor. Prepare interceptor missile for launching. Message understood. <laughs> Ignition and go. Well done, Professor. Now winch us in. Well, Venus, there's Earth. Sure looks better from here than inside that subterranean rocket. Thanks to you, Steve. I guess I know now why they call you the greatest astronaut on Space Patrol. I think you're cute, too. Space Patrol, this is Fireball XL5 returning to base. Mission complete. Over and out. I wish I was a spaceman, the fastest guy alive. I'd fly you around the universe in Fireball XL5 Way out in space together, conquers of the sky My heart would be a fireball, a fireball Every time I gazed into your starry eyes We'd take the path to Jupiter and maybe very soon We'd cruise along the Milky Way and land upon the moon To a wonderland of stardust, we'll zoom our way to Mars My heart would be a fireball, a fireball 